So this video is going to be covering chapter 16, section 2, which deals with the driving forces of reactions. And reactions and whether or not they occur really depend on two things. The first of which is the change in energy given usually by the enthalpy symbol delta H, as well as the randomness of particles in the system. And we'll develop a more quantitative concept of this randomness called uh, entropy later on, and it's usually represented by delta S. And we'll start off by uh, reviewing briefly enthalpy and how it affects the way in which reactions take place. So m the majority of reactions that take place naturally are exothermic. In other words, they release energy from the system over the course of the reaction. So if you start off with this much energy, during the course of the reaction it'll drop down and the products end up with this much energy down here. Now you would think that because you end up in a lower energy state it'd be pretty difficult to get back up here. So almost all naturally occurring reactions would be exothermic. However, as we'll see later, endothermic reactions can occur as well if they correspond to a certain change in the randomness of the system. Moving on now to entropy and reaction tendency. Now entropy is what's going to be responsible for making endothermic reactions, spontaneous endothermic reactions rather, possible. For example, if you have a block of ice, and within that block of ice you have a group of ice crystals usually ranged in some sort of hexagon. If you leave this ice out at room temperature, it can spontaneously turn into water, which seems a bit strange at first because that means it spontaneously gained heat from the system. However, despite the fact that they have some t small vibration as a solid and therefore some energy and a large vibration as a liquid and therefore more energy, in other words it absorbed the kinetic energy of the air, uh, these water molecules can flow past one another, around one another, whereas in this crystal they're sort of locked in state and this increase in disorder, in other words because the water is now a liquid it's harder to track an individual particle which means the whole system is sort of more random. This increase in randomness is what allows this spontaneous endothermic reaction to occur. So entropy as a formal definition is basically a measure of randomness or disorder within a system. So the spontaneous decomposition of ammonium nitrate can take place because you're going from a solid which once again is highly ordered all these molecules are sort of locked in place to two gases and a liquid and in the gases remember that the molecules are going to be far apart scattered every which way and in the liquid they're sort of close together but they can slide past one another do their various vectors. So you're increasing the disorder of the system despite the fact that it takes energy to do so. And as a general rule, a solid is going to have less entropy than a liquid, which in turn will have less entropy than a gas. Because once again you have, you know, the locked together molecules of the solid, the close together, but you know, randomly moving molecules of the liquid, and the far apart uh, quickly moving molecules of a gas. So you can see that this is more orderly than this, which is more orderly than this in turn. So to formally define entropy, it's set to be zero at zero degrees Kelvin, which you can't ever reach. And this is for a crystalline solid as well. So if things are locked in place in sort of a grid or a cubic or a hexa hexagon, etc. At zero Kelvin, there's zero entropy, which is impossible to reach. However, as you add energy and increase the temperature, the entropy in turn will also increase. And this change in entropy is usually denoted by the symbol delta S. And it's called delta S because it's a change in entropy derived usually from a reaction. So you have the entropy of the product minus the entropy of the reactants. Very similar to how enthalpy is measured as the difference between the enthalpy of the product and the enthalpy of the reactant. Therefore you can see if you increase the entropy, in other words the 
ent entropy of the product is greater than the enthalpy of the entropy of the reactant rather uh, you're going to have a positive entropy lastly just as a sort of illustrated application of this a solution is always going to increase entropy so let's say you start off with you know a solution of water and you pour in some sugar well initially the sugar will make a pile at the bottom but if you stir it up you're going to end up with a solution that has you know water and then sugar particles randomly dispersed throughout the solution and you can see that having these two segregated layers is much more orderly than having random particles in one solution. Finally now we're going to be moving on to how exactly you relate enthalpy and entropy and that's through a characteristic known as free energy. Basically you have to realize that nature will move towards the state of lowest enthalpy in other words releasing the most possible energy or greatest entropy so increasing this the disorder as much as possible and to decide which of these factors really wins out in the reaction we use what's called Gibbs free energy now Gibbs free energy is a mathematical measurement based on the initial enthalpy entropy and temperature and Gibbs free energy usually denoted Delta G is given by the mathematical expression enthalpy delta H minus the temperature which is in Kelvin times the uh, change in entropy so delta S finally if Gibbs free energy is less than zero in other words delta G is negative then the reaction is what is known as spontaneous and we'll get into a more formal definition but that basically means that the reaction can happen given the right conditions so for the last part of this video we're going to be doing a sample problem to determine whether this reaction of ammonium chloride decomposing into uh, ammonium gas and hydrochloric acid gas uh, is spontaneous given the information here so what we first do is set up our Gibbs free energy equation. So delta G equals delta H minus the temperature in kelvins times the change in entropy. And because we're given all this information, it's basically just a plug and chug. So delta G equals, you know, 176 minus 298 times 0.285. And what you end up with is a delta G of 91 kilojoules per mole. In other words, this reaction is not spontaneous because delta G is greater than zero.